Hey guys, it's Ardo. Today I wanted to talk about superhero films and the age-old question. Which is better, the DC Extended Universe or the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Many people would say MCU, but I want to make a bold claim here. No. I have watched every MCU movie and every DCEU movie. Marvel movies have a light-hearted or entertaining feel to them. They don't dive too deeply into any concepts or themes. They kill off their villains in the movie they appear in. They have the same cool dude who does stuff falls from grace then does cool stuff dude plot. They look pretty bland. They have two kinds of action sequences. Scenes shot by a camera guy that sustained serious nerve damage after a motorcycle accident and scenes with unconvincing CGI where everything is shot from predictable angles. And they have a pretty average music score. DC movies have a gritty or serious feel to them. They discuss concepts or themes in relative detail. They have some of the best action sequences in modern cinema. They have great characters from the start of the movie without much need for development. They use tons of references that are used usually only affected the comic experts, and they have an awesome music score. These are the Marvel movies I liked most. Thor The Dark World, which is for some reason considered the worst, I don't get it. Doctor Strange, and Spider-Man Homecoming. Here are the DC movies I liked most. Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, yes, I liked Batman vs Superman, and Wonder Woman. People will usually say this when challenged with the idea that DC movies are better than Marvel. They're too serious, they aren't funny, they don't make sense, or I thought it was too confusing. I normally say, sorry you had to think for this one, Marvel is only better than DC at marketing to wide audiences by using simple stories and relatable characters. DC makes objectively better movies. They exceed in writing, action, and visuals. Say what you will about Zack Snyder, but the man makes some killer action sequences. Let's go through the movies individually. First off, we have Man of Steel, Superman's 48th origin story. It's got some great character development, and it doesn't require a fall from grace to get across its story. The destruction in this film got a little bit out of hand, but even this was premeditated as it advanced the story into Batman vs Superman. You can really sympathize with the villain, General Zod. He's just trying to let his species survive. His death meant something to the movie. The moment Superman killed him, I almost teared up. I had to face Superman's decision to kill with him and accept the implications. All in all, the soundtrack and the visuals alone were enough to make me enjoy this movie. It's an 8 out of 10 to me. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The Rise of the Marthas. Why did you say that name? I was really excited to see this movie, and I was really expecting to see some great comic references so we could see where the movies went from here, and I was not disappointed. There are references to the Justice Society, Doomsday, Darkseid, Injustice, the Future Justice League, Flash Time Traveling, Jason Todd, and a bunch of other stuff. The movie's plot wasn't the clearest, no, but many of the gripes people have with the movie are unfounded. For instance, Jesse Eisenberg was not playing Lex Luthor, and they clearly said that in the movie. His true name is Alexander Luthor Jr., Lex Luthor's son. Alexander Luthor Jr. is from a comic storyline called Infinite Crisis, where he comes from Earth 3, a dimension where all of the heroes are villains and vice versa. Alexander Luthor Jr. is the only surviving member of Earth Earth 3, as the multiverse got combined into Earth 1 and Crisis on Infinite Earths. He, throughout the storyline, uses his intelligence to get people to do what he wants for him. Eisenberg, without all of the flair, uses his intelligence and position to trick people and to get what he wants. He's not cold and calculated like his father, and he shouldn't be. People don't like it that Batman killed people. Too bad. This version of Batman kills people. He's clearly been through a lot even before Superman ever showed up. One possibility for his behavior could be the absence of Tim Drake, the Robin that saved Bruce from falling into violence following Jason Todd's death in the comics. This was definitely the best version of Batman on screen as Batman. No other movie has gotten right the biggest part of Batman's character like this one, his incredible detective skills. People will always reference the scene where Batman is about to kill Superman after clearly winning in combat and Supes lets his mother's name out since Luther is holding her hostage. It just so happens that Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne's mother others have the first name Martha, but that really isn't significant. The fact that Bruce had forgotten his own humanity and family trying to defend humanity is a much bigger deal than coincidental naming. Again, action, visuals, and soundtrack was on point, so I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. Next up, we have Suicide Squad, when the plot is just too distracting from the characters. Suicide Squad let me realize that Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are not the only heroes in the DC Extended Universe, and there are a plethora of other heroes and villains DC is not scared to introduce. Let's be honest, if this movie was judged on the quality of its characters, it would be a lot better than it is. The plot was pretty non-existent and only there to develop characters, so that's a problem. And the villain sucked. It still made me think about the morality of the Suicide Squad as it's designed to, which I liked. When I watched the movie in theaters, I was just sort of excited about the Flash cameo and Jason Todd reference. The rest of the movie I didn't really care much about at the time. I'd give this one a pretty solid 6. <coughs> 0.25. And the most recent one, Wonder Woman, the so-called savior. This is by far the best of the DCBs. 
It told Wonder Woman very well, and I had never really known much about her character, so it was all new to me. The action was awesome, the soundtrack was great, the characters were well done, and the plot was good. This is going to be a big spoiler for Wonder Woman, so skip to whatever timestamp I put on the screen now, so you don't have to hear it. If you're still here, then you have either seen the movie, or really hate yourself. Moving on. Steve Chather's death was so emotional. It was done so well, and I definitely teared up in the theater. People say that the ending with Ares wasn't perfect and could have been better. I had accidentally looked at the cast list beforehand, which spoils Ares' identity, but his powers as a god were still really cool on screen, and the idea still remains that human nature is flawed, and war is part of us as a species. Ares' death did not end war. In fact, who he had been disguised as the whole movie was working towards peace. The peace that was created, ending World War I, was historically the cause for World War II. World War II. This was right about humanity. This is the end for the spoilery part. The action sequences in these movies are also really good because they display the true power of superheroes beyond strength and gadgets in their speed. If you can move faster than humans' perception, you are now stronger than any human. All in all, great story, great themes. If you haven't, watch it. I give it a good 9 out of 10. The Justice League trailers have looked really good so far and I am hyped. But I do have a few fears for the movie. It has to have a strong plot beyond the Justice League beating up parademons or it will fail. Having a good story will keep the movie from needing 10 years of previous character development films to get out a good group up one. No matter what happens, if they get the flash right, I will be completely fine with whatever else they get wrong. I can't take CW's version anymore. And when it comes to the future of these film franchises, I see Marvel is pretty much burnt out. They already stated that they are changing up characters after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and they don't have access to the Fantastic Four or X-Men, so they don't have a lot of options for stories they can do, which is sort of a shame. Their movies were just starting to improve in quality. They will have used Infinity War and Civil War. From my limited knowledge of Marvel comics, are two of the largest comic story arcs in Marvel history. DC has so much more to offer in terms of movie ideas. They can make a Justice League of America film where they introduce characters like Simon Baz, who's a green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, Catwoman, Green Arrow, Hawkman, Vibe, and Stargirl. They are probably currently working on a Justice League Dark film with a bunch of cool supernatural stuff, sort of like Doctor Strange was to the MCU. Past introducing characters, they have such storylines as Crisis on Infinite Earths, Infinite Crisis, Final Crisis, Flashpoint, Forever Evil, Dark Side War, and different villains like Brainiac to utilize in movies. I am worried that they will not make the right movies going forward. Not even just for my sake, but a solo Flash film should be a major priority, seeing how popular the character has gotten lately. They are confirmed to be making Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman 2, Cyborg, and Green Lantern Corps movies. Out of those, I'm only super excited to see Green Lantern Corps and mildly excited to see Shazam. Aquaman will probably be good since it's directed by James Wan, director of Insidious, among other hits. I think Wonder Woman is a limited success, and another film is just going to oversaturate the series. No one cares about Cyborg unless he's in the Teen Titans, which is not the version they're going with, so I'm not pleased. The only Flash movie possibly in the making is Flashpoint, which could be really Really good. But CW's The Flash has proven that even Flashpoint can be screwed up by bad directors and writers. A Batman movie has great potential, a Batgirl one does not. Black Adam solo film will be a mistake, no question, especially with The Rock. Nightwing is supposed to be directed by Chris McKay, who co-directed the Lego Batman movie and is a huge fan of the character, so I am very excited to see where that goes. Gotham City Sirens has some potential and Suicide Squad has to be good or I'm giving up. As for Marvel, Spider-Man Homecoming was the culmination of learning from mistakes for Marvel, but they still made a few that really annoyed me even in this movie. For example, there's a point in the movie where there's like a five second shot of Peter Parker just staring at himself and his mask in a puddle. We learn that he is realizing that his suit doesn't define him without the viewer needing to be told explicitly. And I was really proud of Marvel for putting in some nuance until a voiceover from Robert Downey Jr. played like the voice of God and reminded him that his suit doesn't define him. I was so disappointed. Infinity War looks pretty gritty, so I guess we'll see how filthy casuals enjoy a bit of serious thought. Please don't think that I hate Marvel or that anyone who likes their movies is an awful human being that doesn't deserve free will. I just hate how mindless family fun is said to be better than movies that are just clearly superior. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy content like this, leave a like and please consider subscribing. I'm trying to grow the channel and every bit of support helps. If you just want to subscribe for now and you realize that you don't like the channel or its content later on, you can unsub, but right now I just need help getting to a sustainable point. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.